Okay, I'm glad to be back. I had the coronavirus for 28 days, 30 days. I had symptom after symptom after symptom, and I felt like I was going to die for about quite a few days going through it. It was really quite hard on the body, and um, I've made a couple of videos about it, so you can go back and have a look um, on my YouTube feed and you'll see them. But I'll probably say more about what I think about that in, in the coming week ahead. What I'm going to look at today is um, we've got, at the moment, we've still got the Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn and Mars sort of all working together. So we've got Pluto and Jupiter, which are conjunct at the moment. And Pluto is about birth, death, transformation. And Jupiter is about expansion, you know, for better or for worse. So, and about truth as well. Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Pluto, um, both of them are in Capricorn. Saturn is one degree of Aquarius. It just moved out of Capricorn after two and a half years. So we got a bit of a fresh start going on there, wherever that's going to go. And then we've got Mars, which is eight degrees of Aquarius as well. So we can see what's going on there. The South Node is currently in Capricorn and it's going to go into, it's going to move and it's going to, the South Node is going to move into Sagittarius and the North Node is going to move into Gemini around the 5th of May. I think that's about the right date. And then what we have as well is that, I might as well run through this as I'm here. Venus is currently in Gemini and it's going to go retrograde, as, you know, in, in, in Gemini as well. Uranus, which deals with, is breaking free of limitations and trauma and such like, is in Taurus, and Taurus is to do with our resources and needs, so our money, our values, our inner needs. So you, we, we know clearly in society right now there's a lot of changes going on, and the Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter conjunction was all about the breakdown of structure as we know it, and that's how it's played out, like in a phenomenal, phenomenal way. And, you know, it's just beautiful to see astrology actually playing out in a way that it speaks. So astrology does speak. Now, what we have is that Neptune is in Pisces. Mercury is at two degrees of Aries and it moved into Aries a few days ago. I think it was, you know, literally it moves very quickly. Mercury takes 88 days to move around a chart and then it goes retrograde three to four times a year. Chiron is currently also in Aries and Lilith is in Aries and the sun is in Aries. So what we've got is that in a few days, we're going to, we can already say that Mercury is very much conjunct Chiron. So I want to talk about Mercury as a bit of a lesson and an understanding. I've got, I'm a Gemini and Mercury rules my, you know, Gemini and Mercury also rules Virgo, but different aspects of, you know, both those signs. Now, in the respect that Mercury is to do with communication and it's to do with short journeys and travels and internet, you know, just generally the emails and stuff like that. So we can, we understand that Mercury is about communication. Chiron or Chiron, some people say Chiron, it's about the wound and Chiron takes 50 to 51 years to move around your astrology chart. So if you look at your astrology chart from birth, it's going to take 51 years, 50 to 51 years to, to become conjunct. A conjunction is, is when a planet is on top of another one, like we can see here at the moment. We've got Pluto is conjunct Jupiter. And then we've got here at the moment that Mercury is two degrees of Aries and Chiron is at six degrees. So that's in orb and that's a conjunction. And then we've got Lilith there as well. So the story of Lilith, you know, we can go very deep with the understanding of Lilith, but Lilith in the Bible, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden, she refused to lay below the Adam. You know, there's so many stories you can look up online, Google what Lilith meant in the, you know, in history. But Lilith is really the wild one, the wild, the wild card, the wild woman. And that's not just going to be the wild woman in women. That's going to be the wild feminine in all of us. You know, the one who's going to speak the truth and stand up and, you know, be a little bit outspoken but you know a very powerful archetype that is so what i'm going to tell you is that i've got this book here 
and this is Chiron, and it's by Barbara Hand Cal. And I'm going to read um, what Mercury conjunct Mercury conjunct Chiron means because it's quite beautiful. And the other thing I'm going to tell you as well is that Chiron, uh, Mercury, sorry, is is also and Chiron is currently conjunct. This is what I'm going to say, and the node that, which is our life path for all of us currently, but also individually in our chart. So we've got the collective chart and then we've got the individu individuated chart, which is our own chart. So let's look here. We've got moon currently square Mercury. So we've got the moon. And if we look at the moon here, then we've got Mercury down here. So, you know, we'd, we're literally gonna have the moon square Mercury. So let me scroll down and show you something. Let's get out of that, hang on a minute. Okay, so if we scroll down and we have a look and we look, we can see all, all of the planets, what's happening today. So if you, we go to, we find Mercury on the list, we've got Mercury, sextile, Saturn. And if we go further down, we can see that there's no more Mercury there. So we can go on this side and we look for Mercury and we've got Mercury square in the moon. And we go down again and we look in for Mercury and then Mercury is squaring the North Node. And then if we go down again, Mercury is conjunct Lilith. And then if we go down again, we've got Mercury conjunct Chiron. And from that, I'm just going to give you a bit of um, education. And you may know this if you're into astrology. And there's so many ways to read a chart. But I think it's a beautiful thing when we can learn together and begin to look into the deeper layers of what a chart means. Because there's so much to look at when we look at chart work so many different angles, so many different ideas, and every, each astrologer is unique, as the planets are unique, and we're all unique. So the moon square Mercury is about inattention, and it's stress and frustration. This is a very short idea of what it means. And then we've got, so I'm gonna do that again, we've got the moon square Mercury. Then we've got Mercury sextile Saturn. So if we look at Mercury, and we look at Saturn is here, it's a sextile. A sextile is 60 degrees on average, you know, within an orb. And Mercury sextile Saturn, it's about the bigger picture, it's about planning, and it's about patience. So, you know, at the moment, we're all probably going to be doing that a bit as well. So we're all a bit frustrated, clearly, because we're all in isolation or self-isolation or social distancing. It's really difficult, you know, I popped out and you sort of walking down the road and people cross cross over the road and but at the same time I was thinking you know it's probably the safest time with regard to crimes and things like that because people are having to stay away from each other so I you know I don't know what's happening in the reality of the land of the real world you know where things where people are having to stay away from each other so it's going to be interesting how different things get affected then if we look we've got the north the north node is squaring mercury so if we look at the north node currently, which is at two degrees of Cancer, it is squaring Mercury here. So you've got two degrees, two degrees. So that's a bang on square. That's 90 degrees apart. And so the short version of that is it's about developing ideas and it's about moving forward. But what we have to understand is that Mercury moves really, really quickly. The outer planets really have a bigger play on our the depth of our lives. And the inner planets, which are the outer planets are um, Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Chiron, and they're, they're the outer planets, and Uranus, so they take a long time to move, you know, move through the skies. But the personal planets are the Sun, and the Moon, and Mercury, and Venus, and Mars. So these planets move quicker, so they, they're not absolutely fleeting, but they're, you know, there's just a slower thing going on. Um, then we've got also that Lilith is conjunct Mercury. So if we look, there's Mercury and there's Lilith, and that's a four degree orb. They're both in the same sign. So again, we've got that would, that's about the inner wild. It's about our perception and it's about not being rigid. So when Mercury is working with Lilith, it's about not being rigid. It's, you know, it can be some, you know, wildness going on there. And we don't want to be rigid at the moment. We have to think in bigger terms. And we, you know, so again, it's very interesting. So now what I'm going to do, what, I'm going to read a bit from this book. We've got Chiron conjunct Mercury, which is probably for the week ahead. 
So we can see that Chiron is the wound and that Mercury is, is our thinking. So let me go for this and see what I can gather from this book. Here it is again. Okay, Chiron, beautiful book to have so that you can understand your healing journey through life. I suggest you get it on Amazon. And Chiron in aspect to Mercury. So what we're going to do is look for the conjunction. And Chiron conjunct Mercury creates a superlative ability to perceive exactly what is going on in any situation and to understand how people are thinking in relation to the situation. This is a marvelous aspect for a negotiator, for a business person working with groups, for a teacher or for a therapist involved in group counseling. Chiron is ruled by Virgo, oh sorry, I missed a bit there. Mercury, it says here, for a business person working with groups, for a teacher or for a ther therapist involved in a group counseling. Mercury conjunct Chiron also indicates great faculty with computers. Chiron ruled by Virgo grounds through into exact space and time and the conjunction extremely enhances this skill when in conjunction with Mercury. So we can see that, you know, this is probably what we've got going on this week, that um, we're going to have, you know, it's, we're going to, people are going to be negotiating. There's going to be some negotiations going on. It's like, what are, what are we currently doing in society? Are we going to continue in a lockdown? Are we going to, is there another way of doing things? So we've got to negotiate because it's all, you know, all about where we want to go and we can't stay stuck at home forever. But clearly this is going to play out for a long time because we've got this Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn up here. And those were all conjunct um, earlier this year in the Pluto and the Saturn was conjunct on the 12th of January. And that symbolism showed that we were going to have a complete breakdown of structure. And it's phenomenal the way it's happened. The other thing I'd like to point out as well is that something I was looking at, because I had in a composite chart with somebody, which was interesting, Chiron... Um, squaring the nodes so if you look at the six degree here and it's you know there is a square going on there with Chiron which is the wound and that's humanity it's our life path at the moment so what we have here is it I'm just going to read it straight from the book that there there are many other aspects to the south and north nodes but the last really significant one is Chiron square when it squares the nodes as Shulman, I think I've pronounced that correctly, has taught, whenever a planet squares at the nodes, it functions as a significant distraction to the work of developing the life path with the nodes. So when Chiron squares the nodes, transmutation energy and higher consciousness functions as a blocking action to progress on the nodes. This is the native, that is that the native has a hard time activating the north and letting go of the south node while also funneling in the south node knowledge to feed the north node. So let me explain here. The south node is where we've come from and the north node is where we're heading. So the south node, whilst we've got some implicit memories, meaning stuff that we may not remember and from the womb and pre that, you know, whatever we believe like past lives or even the collective unconscious, if we look at it, you know, our ancestors, we've got all of this stuff that's in our, inside us that we brought in, that we're carrying, and because of the experiences we've had, and it's within us. So we have a lot of feelings, and we're trying to do something in humanity to move forward into a way of being. But when we've got a square, Chiron, we're struggling, we're, we're struggling at the moment, you know, but this will change, it's not permanent. And I think as part of evolution, it's a very interesting time we live in. So it's not all doom and gloom, but at the same time, a lot of people are going to be suffering horrendously right now. Some of us are going to be taking this a lot easier because we've got a few resources, we can look after ourselves, but there are some people that are just going to have the hardest time with this. When you look at places like India, where people have had to walk hundreds of miles just to get out of the city to go home, you know, it's really quite serious for some people. So reading on here, um, let me see, the South Node. So, however, it is even more complex than that. Ideally, we would activate the North and live it. So we need to activate the North Node as humanity and begin to live it. And it's currently in Cancer, which is to do with Mother and the, the Moon and our emotions and nurturing. 
and we're really trying to sort that out on earth you know that we run around like headless chickens and people ignoring each other and not we're not looking after each other so that north node really in cancer is about really embracing and about healing you know at a deep level with that chiron and we're stuck you know we, we haven't quite got it yet clearly we can see what's going on in the world so we want to really you know step away from the south node and take the the good stuff out of it but we don't want to keep living in the past anymore so also we need to develop the so we could, when we sort this out like we can develop like a kundalini energy and, and what i mean by that is like that's probably where the energy becomes really aligned when we understand this square and we can figure something out in ourselves and it says here, with Chiron square the nodes, it tends to cause all parts of the nodes to be activated, resulting in a short-term highly activated axis. Most of my, she says here, most of my clients who have this position had a great struggle living up to this until their Uranus opposition, but they are unusually talented and able to use past life knowledge in this incarnation. So we've got the ability right now to use our past life knowledge, you know, our, even our past life, what we've been through in humanity, we can look back on history and we can see, you know, I was looking at an article the other day on pandemics. In Roman times, you know, there, were, there was a pandemic and five to 10 million people died, you know. So I'll put the link below for that um, list of the pandemics that have gone on because they have added late of late the coronavirus to that. It's a fascinating document to look at. It's on Wikipedia. So let's see what the week ahead holds for us, but we've got a lot to resolve. So that's it. I'm not going to go any further with that. I'm just, you know, showing you. And you can also, if you want to look at your own chart and just play it, it doesn't read your chart this site, but you can get your own birth and natal chart here online, a calculator, which is really useful. But a chart reading is a whole different thing. And if you wanted me to do that, I've currently got an offer going on that I'm, you know, that I've, really reduce my prices whilst we're in self-isolation so that I can help people because otherwise you know people are just people need people to talk to at the moment we need to evolve and we need to this is one tool where we can begin to help ourselves and understand ourselves but you do need your time of birth it's vital in astrology so that's it I'm going to stop share and I'm going to leave it there and I'll be back tomorrow with something else catch you later